Yeah. Uh, but, um, I, uh, the, uh, you see. So, say, uh, Tambo, why aren't you at your post? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> normally I would be, but, uh, there's a ghost in the closet? A ghost in the closet. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm maybe wondering if you knew uh, that I shoo it away? Tambo, as I open myself to the obvious joke, there is no such thing as... Boo, I'm a ghost. Wanna play a scary game? Team Ghost is crossing off again! I will not tolerate obscure references in this house. Play as the ghost, you know, start some mischief on an unsuspecting home and watch the residents run off in terror? Well, there was a game that delved into such an idea, and it starred a character named Polter Guy. You know, Polter Guy! Everyone knows Polter Guy! Where have you been? Well, apparently he's trademarked, so anyone using the name, you gotta answer to Electronic Arts and I'm sure they'd be happy to discuss it with you. As we open the manual, you'll notice we're first greeted to what seems to be some bios to the game's main characters? I suppose there's some resemblance? To be honest, it's hard to tell, since the manual's in black and white. I can't really distinguish the green complexion and overly pinkish nose. Actually, no, the first few pages are actually something of the game dev's resumes. You know, just in case some kid happens to be looking for a game designer. <laughs> Hell, some of this even sounds like a personal ad. John Salswitz spends a large part of what spare time he has rebuilding his house. This includes woodworking, electrical work, plumbing, and finish work. Dave Doc Ralston, when asked, what on earth are you going to do with a fine arts degree? He would answer, uh, I don't know, or go Dodgers. Will Noble's first animation jobs on Saturday morning cartoons, New Flintstones, and Rubik the Amazing Cube. Keith Robertson worked as a consultant for various Bay Area films as a real-time systems programmer in a variety of applications including blah 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 blah. All of this he gave up and returned to his first love, games! Haunting is Keith's first game. Oh, Keith. Here's something I really find amusing. John Salzwitz and Dave Ralston have worked together since they met at Atari October 1981. Oh, a year before I was born. Producing Akart, which flopped. I don't know if that's really wise to put in your resume that something you worked on failed. Well, now that we've been introduced to the makers of this game, let's pop in this old ghost and see what we're in for. Say, why does this card have this yellow tab here? So this Poulter guy happens to be this teenage slimer with a Bart Simpson haircut, complete with 90s attitude. Just by looking at him, I can deduce that his voice may be close to something like this. Dude, death sucks. I had a lot of things I wanted to do, and becoming a ghost was not, like, real high on the list. I mean, not having to go to school is excellent, but all these dungeons I have to hang around are uncool. They make study hall look like a rave. So, Polter Guy is the ghost of a dead teenager who died using a faulty skateboard made by a profit-driven corporation owned by Vito Sardini. Well, this concept isn't foreign, naturally. If movies and TVs have taught us anything, it's that corporations are evil. <laughs> <laughs>
You see dudes, skating and being excellent is really awesome. And being young and cool is the most excellent thing of all. And God help you if you are an unexcellent business in our young society, dude. Vito isn't the only one you're after. Apparently, being rich and evil runs in the family, as you're also vowed to make his wife and kids' lives a living hell. The daughter's role model is the inventor of DDT? Well, we better put a stop to that! She may grow up to be the next Hitler! Or worse, a video game critic! As you spot the Sardinis entering their new humble abode, it's up to you to scare them by any means necessary, bringing in the game's most unique gameplay feature, using your surroundings to your advantage. The basics are to find each of the four family members within the house via a useful map when you pause, then enter in a number of items around them that give them the heebie-jeebies. And the more heebie-jeebies you give them, the more likely they'll run out of the house, leaving their loved ones behind? Sorry, darling, I know I spent 20 years together, but ghosts is all that. Oh dear, sorry children, but my maternal instincts suggest I leave you both alone in the house of danger. <laughs> this family is the real monsters. No. Come to think of it, Poltergeist's intentions are fairly mean-spirited. <laughs> uh, sorry for the pun. I mean, don't get me wrong, I understand he's doing it purely on the fact of revenge due to his wrongful death connected to an evil corporation. But it does kind of prove a theory that I've had for a couple years now. Ghosts are dicks. The game hosts a huge number of different scares. Uh, excuse me, fridoms. All uniquely animated, ranging from pretty gruesome, silly and strange, to disgusting. I can imagine the development team coming up with all these different ways to present scares to unleash against the family. A lot of them are pretty inventive and take advantage of the era's, shall we say, more relaxed use of imagery? Though I guess it all seems pretty tame by today's standards. This was made around the time Mortal Kombat was... yeah. There's a wide variety of creative stuff, although I mean, it gets a little weird when Salacious B. Crumb exits a toilet and starts flinging poop all over the place. Even the family's reaction can be pretty priceless too, or maybe as disturbing as the haunting imagery itself. <laughs> a child urinated all over herself in pure terror. <laughs> Priceless. <laughs> we should send this to America's Funny Snow videos. <laughs> that used to be a thing back then. The scarums are fairly easy to control. Furniture with a blue spark simply need to be entered and exited, kind of like a trigger. The shaking fascinates each family member so much they have to walk over and look at it, ultimately getting scared. You figure after the 15th time this happened, they'd stop looking at their furniture! Areas with a yellow spark are more or less controlled by you and have a wider range of scare attack, I should say. Meaning their trigger is instant, but don't necessarily cancel out other scare traps getting ready to be set. Stuff with a green spark can be entered and allow you to possess an object and attack with scares for a brief period of time. When you enter them, a red meter shows up at the bottom until you're no longer allowed to use the object in question. Speaking of meters, let's talk about how you take a stake in this situation. Below you'll notice the green meter slowly taking its toll as you continue. This would be your health bar, or ectometer. The more you linger, the more it depletes, and the only way to replenish it is to gather up little green pooplets that spill about everywhere after you scare a family member. So do yourself a favor, make sure to stay in the room after they escape to pick them up, or else you will be taken down. Down into the forbidden zone. Or dungeon, I don't know, who cares? Yes, the dungeon! A quaint little piece of the afterlife built deep within the depths of the underworld. Here within the comfort of stone walls, you'll be greeted by your friendly neighbors. Enjoy the natural wildlife and bask in the many generous offerings. Just be sure not to step too close to the swirling vortex of fist. All this can be yours if the price is life! To escape the dungeons, you have to collect the many green drops of goop. But ectoplasm to return home egon explained it better trust me you know as much as i hate the many deadly hands bats and skulls your worst enemy is the jumping needless to say if you spend too much time getting hit in this realm you're doomed and well the game is over only to continue at the very beginning no will this continuous nightmare never end once all the members of the family are out of the house it's only natural they move to another 
so it's time to do this all over again until they're, I don't know, homeless, I guess. The further you go, you'll be greeted to a dog whose fifth sense tends to seek you out and damage your ectometer. Though to be honest, the dog has never really been a huge threat to me. You hear him bark, you avoid him, and he just walks right past you. Then there are all these green spirit heads that you have to kick away once in a while, so I guess there's also that. Through the whole game, there's only four houses to terrorize, and along the way, you can pick up new powers that will show up at random. I think. I haven't really figured it out. I think there are these red letters that drop in the dungeon or something. Dog Off is pretty self-explanatory. It gets rid of the dog. There, I told you what it does. A supper scare created a gift-wrapped present in the middle of the room or something, leaving it to any family member that opens it to immediately get supper scarred. Boodoo is not, in fact, ghost poop. It allows you to throw little red balls that scare the family easily. The family is scared of balls. Ghost testicles. S -g -x -x -a -x -x uh, this replenishes your health. It's by far the most useful spell. Zombie eyes lets you possess a member of the family and scare the rest. I never used it, so no footage, I apologize. Here's a reenactment of the events. Oh, I'm a Vito Sadini, and I'm possessed by the ghost of p Dog. After the fourth horse, you're left alone, only to be guided toward a mysterious room in the back. What could possibly be waiting for you there? Is it candy? Skateboards? A badger? No, spoilers! It turns out the dog did it! It was the dog all along! I be wait. What did he do exactly? It's not really explained why this canine wants you to- HOLY MAGILLA EVIL MUTANT PUDDLE! It still doesn't explain anything, but yeah, yeah! Puddle. There is no Muffy, only Zool. Okay, we're at the final only boss, and I'm going to say that this is the worst boss I've ever had to face. Not because it's necessarily difficult, mind you. I mean, it is difficult, but that's mainly due to the fact that your only means of attacking seems to be the most mind-bogglingly ludicrous defense I have ever seen. At first, you need to kick these green spirits out of the way, leaving the boss open for a bombardment, but Jiminy Hain, there is absolutely no decent targeting! Come on. Come on! Hit the mutant mass! How could you possibly keep missing the big slow-moving brown thing? Polterfry, are you drunk? <laughs> Down with the establishment, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm like, so wasted on the truth and stuff. I mean, corporations are stupid. And you're stupid, you big ugly stupid. If you're lucky enough to even survive that mess, you're greeted with the final form, where it starts to form into big walking brains that can clone themselves. Yeah, that's the next logical step to take this, I suppose. Okay, whose idea was this? Was it you, Keith Robertson? I knew there was something off about you, this being your first game and all. What is up with this weapon? This is the only means of attack, as they go straight over their heads, or brains, I mean. It's impossible to get them as they move so fast and they have to be at the farthest end of the screen in order to get hit. Not only that, they start to split into two the moment you actually do get to attack. The mere touch drains your health, and it's back to the dungeon world. I finally managed to figure out a kind of pattern to this madness, but it really took a lot of trial and error. Eventually, I defeated the evil brains, and I I managed to become a real boy! I have a second chance at life! From here on in, I'm gonna be a better person. I'll do what I can to help those in need of it. To serve and protect the less fortunate. To finally be the selfless human being that this world deserves! <laughs> So what was the dog really about? Was it death? Satan? An executive? Not gonna give me any notion as to what it was? No, just, I'm dead again, bogus. Don't have a cow, man. Unfortunately, there was no next time for Green P. Diddy, as, well, this was it. May he eat his shorts in peace. This was actually a pretty fun 
experiment of a game. Pretty unique and held a lot of promise, but really there isn't much more to it than what it was. There isn't much at stake as your goal is to just dive into objects over and over again until family members run out of the house. And while it is the fun to scare the living pants off the evil corporate family, the payoff is not really worth it. I'm honestly really curious how a game like this would be handled today. It was pretty fun for a while, but the only thing that makes me want to return is to see what kinds of scares I missed in the various objects and rooms. Overall, Haunting is another one of those games that was a fun idea for a short of a time it lasted, and it's worth a try, but Pubble Gust is just another almost hero. Well, that's Haunting starring Plastercast, and like many games of the past, it's become a ghost of gaming history. So until next time, I... Wait a minute. The, the Genesis? I... I was playing the game, but... The Genesis wasn't plugged in? Then how... Oh wait, I played the game in that Genesis. Oh, Genesis, you 16-bit rascal, you. <laughs>